All right, welcome back to my channel. So as you might know, um, I've started rebuilding T2 frame turbo, so regular T25s and uh, T28s. And I usually do them for private customers. I do rebuilds on the side and stuff like that. So um, I came in contact with this company, Max Speeding Rods. And I've heard of them before. I actually use some of their coilovers in my car. They're pretty decent. But I've never known anything about these Chinese turbos, so I was curious to see what actually goes on inside of one of these turbos. So what I'm going to do is, I've not really unboxed this to be honest, I've opened the box, I've had a look inside, but I'm going to unbox it again on camera. So if you have a look here, first thing when you open the box, you've got your little, what's this, installation manual, installation guide, you got that. And you get your customer service card, I'd assume that's probably like some sort of warranty. I'm not interested in that at the moment. Got a couple gaskets, feels fairly cheap. Got an oil drain gasket, a couple washers, and a banjo bolt for the oil feed line. Then, looks fairly nicely packaged. So, I'm gonna try and get this thing out of here. And have a look. It did come. Um, Fairly quickly, I think the shipping took about three days, two, three days, and it was tracked with Royal Mail, so it seems pretty good. So it's packaged in a little plastic bag. All the inlets are covered up, that already looks fairly good. So, taking the first glance at this, it does look fairly good. Feels nice and heavy. Obviously the housings are just basic housings and all important lettering or anything on there, no information as you'd expect. This is Chinese turbo, it comes with an actuator and stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start taking the housings off and we'll have a look on the inside. However, what I'm going to do as well is, um, once we take the housings off, we'll take a look at the core itself and the housings and then um, I will take the core to Best Turbos in Oldbury and we'll stick it on the VSR balancing machine and have a look what the balance is like for this turbo. Balance in particular is very important on turbos. If the rotating assembly is out of balance, it'll just destroy the bearings almost immediately. So it is important that this is balanced and that's one of the main things I'm looking for really with this. Um, and after we've checked the balance, what we're gonna do is um, take the whole unit apart and compare it to one of these. So in comparison, this is what you'd be looking at, so a T28, this is a hybrid, but you'd be looking at this in comparison, so I'll get one of these, take them apart, and we'll compare each part by part, and compare it to this. So, I'm looking forward to this, so let me get cracking and take this apart. All right, so we're back. I've took apart the housings and um, this is what I found. So instead of the traditional um, seal plate uh, that you'd find on a T28, this actually doesn't have an O-ring. Um, it is attached with some sort of sealant to keep it from leaking, but it doesn't use an O-ring. I'd recommend an O-ring personally, just because that's what I'm used to. Um, otherwise, the seal plate looks really nice. Looks to be made of a bit of aluminium. Compressor wheel is just a standard compressor wheel, um, cast style. Um, it does look like it's been balanced up, so it's been marked, so individually balanced, and it has been VSR balanced, um, according to these small balance marks on the on the nut. Um, looking onto the turbine side, um, this is not a standard turbine wheel you'd find. Um, I've not seen any of these style available for sale anywhere. Um, again, it does look balanced. Um, but this is not a standard style turbine wheel that you'd find on a T25 or T28. This is actually a um, similar style to a GT28 721R, which this is meant to replicate. However, this is journal bearing and not ball bearing. So on a regular T28, which you'd compare this to since it is journal bearing, um, this is the sort of turbine wheel you'd have in comparison. 
Um, so obviously this one's bigger, it is meant to be a 28-7-1-0, um, but it's also a 10 blade instead of the 11 blade on the other one. So moving on to the compressor housing. Looks all right, it is a bit scuffed up on the inside, not perfect quality, but it will do. Um, it looks to be nicely machined otherwise, very shiny. Um, and yeah, it is just a cheap cast housing. No real markings on it, doesn't say what it is. Um, comes obviously with the actuator, I didn't take that apart just because it comes with these nice secure clips. I do like that, it's a nice touch. Um, and it is an adjustable actuator. It does have the adjustable rod, so whatever you want to do, you can adjust that too. Next, we have the turbine housing. So 0.64 AR, um, same as um, 28.721 R or we can get on there. Same as the regular T25, T28 um, housings, they're all 0.64 AR. Um, looks to be nice quality. The machine work is really nice and tidy in there. Um, everything nicely oiled so it doesn't corrode. Um, outlet side looks nice. Although, this um, wastegate port is very, very small, so I'd be worried about boost creep here. You can see where the plate seals. Um, the plate is much, much bigger than the hole, so I'm, I'm concerned that you might experience boost creep with this turbo. Well, I'm almost positive that you would. There's no way it can bleed enough air through that little port, so that would at least need porting. And um, comparing this, let's move this aside, comparing this housing to one of the standard style ones, one of these, um, fairly similar, although the wastegate port is much bigger, so you don't have any boost creep issues with these. Same similar style, design, um, four bolts, etc, etc. And yeah, then we have the gasket, or the gasket pack that came with the turbo. Um, don't really need to take it out, but we'll get it out. So, a regular gasket. It seems to be very, very cheap. Um, it's very thin. I personally wouldn't recommend running one of these. Um, it's not the nicest, um, nicest gasket. You can use it if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, then what else do we have? We have bolts. A banjo bolt. Also very strange, never seen a black coated one, but any will work, looks okay. Then we have this. I'm completely unsure as to what this is. No idea. Then we have two, what seem to be some sort of rubberized material, not entirely rubber. It is paper of sorts. Um, washers, I'd imagine, they're for the banjo bolt. We go on to here. And then you have your little drain gasket. Normal paper style that goes on the bottom of the unit like this. Although the holes are a little smaller than the actual holes inside the core. So you'd have to force a bolt to go through that gasket instead of it nicely sliding through like you would with a with a proper aftermarket gasket. But there's nothing wrong with this gasket. This will still work just fine. All right, so I wanted to elaborate on this a bit more. Since we have this gasket that came with the turbo, it is very cheap, thin star gasket. This is the sort of gasket you get um, um, as an OEM gasket, so it's a multi-layer, quite thick gasket, so I'd recommend one of these. This is not gonna blow as quickly as a thin one would. Um, that's the only one I'd use personally. I wouldn't use one of these cheap ones. I'd, go, I'd definitely go with one of these, one of the OEM style ones. So, moving on to the mounting hardware. Uh, all the bolts were really nice quality. Um, brackets are the same or similar style to what I use in my rear build kits. They feel nice and heavy, so good quality. The bolts are nice and heavy, they look quality as well. Came with a little retaining clip on the wastegate actuator so it doesn't pop off. Um, obviously the other two plates for the compressor housing, so that all looks very, very quality, um, personally, I think. Um, but yeah, next step will be to um, take this, put it on the VSR machine, check what the balance is like, and um, after that, we'll dive deeper, take this apart, and um, see what it's like 
looks like on the inside. All right, guys, so we're back at Best Turbos in Oldbury. We've got the Max Speed and Rods Turbo on the VSR machine, and we're going to check the balance right now. So the balancing process is very simple. You stick the core on there, you close the lid, the front half of the thing will go over the compressor wheel, cover that up, that's what measures the balance. Uh, as the RPM goes up, it will record the balance on the screen. Um, there's a little line that shows what's acceptable and what's not. Anything above the line is usually unacceptable, but obviously, as you can see here, it's well below the line. As the RPM goes, it does tend to go a little higher. It did on this, but it's still completely acceptable at passing the machine. I'm actually very impressed considering it's a Chinese turbo and they're not very well balanced usually, but this one surprised me. It actually passed on the Turbo Technics machine. Um, many aftermarket turbos usually don't pass on the machine and will need further tweaking on the VSR machine. So I'm pleasantly surprised to say that this turbo is actually balanced and it didn't need any adjustment on the VSR whatsoever. All right, so just got back from Best Turbos. They had this on the VSR machine. Results are obviously very good. Surprisingly, the core's well balanced. Um, it did have the balancing marks and stuff on the nuts, on the compressor wheel here, and on the turbine, so. I didn't expect it to be balanced, but it was very well balanced. I think it went up to 100,000 RPM and um, it was just fine like any other unit. So what I'm gonna do now is take this apart and directly compare it to a little test dummy, an old core, a scrap. But um, I've just put some internals in it just for presentation's sake. And um, we're gonna compare the two. So first things first, we're gonna have to take the compressor wheel nut off. Um, it'll most likely be reverse thread, just like the original, um, which means you tighten to loosen and you loosen to tighten, which is correct. So, got the nut off here. Next, compressor wheel slides off. Compressor wheel is only balanced at the front, uh, so single plane balance not balanced on the rear at all could just be because it's well made um, either way it's balanced so like it matters um, next we have the shaft slides out standard heat shield pretty much the same as the other one i'll do a comparison in parts in a minute um, shaft looks to be the exact same design too obviously brand new shaft looks to be Good quality, it's balanced on the inside, unlike the compressor wheel. Um, we could take this core now, same reverse thread that we had on the Max Peding Rods Turbo. Compressor wheel slides off. Garrett one is balanced on the back, but as long as the overall balance is okay, that doesn't really matter. Um, sliding out the shaft, exactly the same style heat shield. And the shaft is the same in terms of design. So um, single piston real type, single piston ring type. Um, pretty much the same shaft length. The max speed rod one is a bit longer. Um, it will have to be because of the bigger compressor wheel. Um, apart from that, no real differences apart from obviously the bigger turbine side shaft is the same. Um, moving on. We've got snap ring here, pretty standard. Would be the same in this core, uh, in the dummy core, but obviously that's not in there because I've took that out. So if we take the snap ring out now. And it goes flying. Oh well. Um, yeah, so take the snap ring out. We can get the dynamic seal plate out, which I'll have to push out from the inside with. Allen key that usually works well. It is only partially coming out. Seems to be a bit stuck. There we go. So seal plate feels very nice and heavy. Uh, that's a good style. I like that. I like that quality so far. Um, 
for the thrust bearing I can already see um, it is a regular 270 degree thrust bearing in comparison to one of my turbos would have an upgraded 360 degree bearing but on the standard Garrett unit you'd have the same style of bearing so if I take this out now um, it's just held in by these four screws which seems to be very tight oh god <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so i got the screws loose and they were very very tight so let's go ahead and take those out now um they are a different style of screw obviously they have the phillips head not the um the torx head that you regularly use a, a torx bit on i think it's a t15 so if we take these out now we'll take a look at the thrust bearing Screw if that wants to come out. There we go. So here's the thrust bearing. It's a regular 270 degree thrust bearing and a um, regular stock collar. This is all looking like OE quality, so it's nothing upgraded. Personally, I'd want to see something with a stronger thrust bearing and a turbo with a compressor wheel this big, so I can imagine this being an issue. Um, I'd recommend that they upgrade to a 360 degree thrust bearing, which would look like one of these. That's a 360 degree type. It just provides full coverage in oil flow and um, prevents the shaft from moving back and forth. So next we move on to the main journal bearings inside the core, which are, they are the big type. Um, unlike the T25, the T28 and the T25 vary. So we'll just get one out of here. This is a T25 style. This is a T25 out of my example one. And this is the max speed and rods one. So you can see they are using the biggest style. This may even be bigger than a 28 one. Um, but it is good they're using the bigger one. It just provides more support for the shaft um, in comparison to the small one. And then we can move on. Just the regular style snap rings in there that hold the bearings. I wasn't expecting anything else. This can be a little fiddly. So please bear with me. All right, so um, I didn't bother in the end taking the snap ring out because it is actually the exact same core design as our example here. So I'll just move this bearing out of the way the exact same design that they've copied so same thrust bearing situation in terms of mounting or flow um, bearing style um, they are using better and stronger snap rings than OEM Garrett um, they're obviously hard to see but they are in there um, compared to the regular Garrett ones they're very strong they actually managed to bend um, the picks I use to normally get these out so they are quite strong. I can't say anything bad about them. They use a regular O-ring for the dynamic seal plate. Just regular quality, I'd imagine. And that's pretty much it. I think, in my overall opinion, I don't think there's anything wrong with these turbos considering they are well balanced um, and they look like they're made out of good parts. The only issue, I can see is obviously the thrust bearing since it's a 270 degree style instead of a 360 degree bearing style. It can provide issues at higher boost levels, but if you're running maybe 10 to 12 PSI on this turbo, you have absolutely no issues, but anything over 14 PSI, you can start seeing wear on the thrust bearing. And imagine with a compressor wheel this big, um, the issues might even come on sooner. So I'm not too sure how safe this would be um, in terms of longevity. But if Max Speed and Rose decided to upgrade to um, the 360 degree bearing, I don't see anything wrong with these turbos. They're well balanced, they're well made. Um, they use quality parts. And this is coming from a person completely unbiased that sells his own turbo products. Um, so that's just my opinion. I don't think there's anything wrong with these parts. It's well assembled. Um, everything is marked up nicely too. Um, and yeah, my overall opinion is cheap turbos, if you have the money, 
to buy something genuine, I'd provide a slightly better option. But at the same time, if you want to save some money, you want to get a Chinese turbo, you're not really that fast if it lasts that long. These are very cheap. I believe they're only 120 pound. So um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with buying one of these. Um, I can see them lasting as long as you don't push them too hard. If you do want to push it harder, um, I'd recommend upgrading the thrust bearing. But other than that, my only advice to max speeding rods myself is you can upgrade the thrust bearing. That'll make this turbo solid and I don't see anything wrong with this turbo. I'd advise advertising it as a 2871R2 instead of a T28, T25 because that's what they're listed at. So yeah, that's my opinion on these turbos. I hope I've answered pretty much every question that you could have about these turbos. And yeah, I might have some more stuff coming soon regarding turbos, so stay tuned for that. And that's the end.